Welcome to the Sip Revolution podcast, your ultimate destination for navigating the world of alcohol without surrendering the sips you enjoy. I'm your host, Salome, and I'm passionate about helping you reclaim control over your drinking. In this podcast, we're on a mission to equip you with practical science-backed strategies that will help you transform your relationship with alcohol on your own terms. We will also uncover how society and the film industry often normalize and romanticize alcohol and the profound impact this has on our physiology and psychology. And we'll dig into the nitty-gritty of how alcohol affects your brain, both physically and mentally. So whether you're trying to cut back, moderate your intake, or simply gain a better understanding of your drinking habits, the Sip Revolution podcast is your partner in crime on this life-changing journey. So let's start this adventure together. Grab your favorite drink, or not. Settle in, and let's sip our way to a healthier and wiser relationship with alcohol. Cheers to a new perspective on sipping. Welcome back to a new episode of the Sip Revolution podcast. Today I wanted to talk about how to drink in moderation and the little things that you can implement to easily cut back on the amount of alcohol you drink on a given occasion. Now, I know that if you are here, there is a chance that you tried to drink in moderation before and you failed. So I wanted to be very clear that I don't think that reaching moderate drinking consistently and naturally is something that is achievable on your own if you have alcohol use disorder. I think that if you are part of this category of people like I used to be, there are some pathways that were created in your brain that change the way your body interacts with alcohol on the biological level. And it makes it just impossible to reach moderation and to drink like a normal drinker. If you're looking for a long-term sustainable solution to your struggles with alcohol, you can listen to my episode on how I became a normal drinker after years of addiction. I am fully aware that there is a difference between long-term solution and quick fix. And the tip that I want to give you today are more tips for you to take action right now if everything else seems too hard. If you know that you will be drinking and you are looking for ways to limit the damage now. One thing that is very important to know is that when you drink alcohol, it affects your brain. Even after a couple of sips, it literally changes the chemical balance of your brain and so the person that you are before you start drinking and after you had your first drink are two different persons. And you can't expect the version of you with alcohol in your system to behave the same way as sober you. So in order to drink in moderation, there are several things that you can try, and most of them are things that you will do before you have your first drink. And this is very important because before you have your first drink, you are fully capable of making rational decisions. You know what your goals are, you know how you want to behave, which won't necessarily be the case after you start drinking, even if you're not drunk after one drink. But as soon as you have this first drink, something changes in your brain, and if you are struggling to drink in moderation, like I was, it might be that these pathways in your brain are so strong that even one drink will completely throw your reasonable goals out of the window when you feel like they don't matter anymore and your only thought is one more won't hurt. The first thing you can do to try and drink less is to start later. My sound silly may be too easy, but it's true that if you start drinking later, well, the time of this delay is still time that you spend not drinking. So let's say you start drinking after work every day at 5 or 6. Maybe you get home and pour yourself a glass of wine and you sit on the couch and relax. Or even faster, you walk from home, you close your laptop, you open a beer and it's time to relax. It is your habit, this is how you unwind, how you turn your brain off after work. I know it feels hard to start later because it's a habit that you have, it's a nice me time moment and it's a treat. You don't want to change that. So I encourage you to experiment by doing other activities that will delay your start time by about an hour. For me, what really worked was to do productive things during this hour. 
This way, I knew that, yes, I was delaying my relaxed time, but it wasn't for nothing. I was doing other stuff in the meantime. So for instance, I would clean the kitchen or I would meal prep. Sometimes I would go to the gym. Sometimes I would do some admin tasks. If you don't want to do something that feels like a chore, you could try other relaxing activities. For instance, you could read a book, you could do a puzzle, some painting, go for a walk, or you could even do the usual, which is relaxing, but with a soft drink to start with. I know all of this is not easy, and it's by experimenting and trying that you will find it easier. Another thing that you can do to delay your start time, and it also brings me to my tip number two, is to eat a big meal before you start drinking. Drinking on a full stomach will slow down the speed that you absorb alcohol, which will make you less drunk and less susceptible to drink more. Because the level of willpower that you have after one drink and after five is not the same. I can remember so many times when I started to drink on an empty stomach and I spent my evening drinking more and delaying dinner until 11 or midnight. These were the days where I would drink the most. On the other hand, if I had food before I started drinking, I would be more likely to stop earlier and go to bed. Before your first alcoholic drink, I would also recommend that you drink a big glass of water. Drink it right before you have your first sip of alcohol. This helps for two reasons. Firstly, a lot of people underestimate how dehydrated they are and tend to down their drink because they are actually thirsty. And since alcohol isn't hydrating, it only makes the problem worse. So if you have a big glass of water just before, you won't be thirsty and you will be less likely to down your drink in two minutes. The other benefit is that it fills up your stomach, which mechanically will make it more difficult for you to fill it up with more liquid. Of course, you will probably still end up drinking your alcohol, but chances are it will take you slightly longer, which is a win. Tip number four is something that I started doing when I started the Sinclair method, which was to leave my drink in the fridge after each sip. So let's say I used to drink on the sofa while watching some Netflix. I would have my glass of wine or my beer or whatever with me. I used to keep my glass in my hand and to basically drink non-stop until the glass was empty which is when I would get up to get a refill. So instead, I started to have a sip of it and then put it back in the fridge and go back to the sofa and watch more TV. And if I wanted another sip, I would have to get up, go to the kitchen, open the fridge, take my glass, take a sip and put it back in the fridge. This was very useful because it helped me do two things. First, It slowed down the pace I was drinking because by having the drink away from me, I couldn't just drink non-stop. On top of that, at almost a subconscious level, I started to unlink being seated on the sofa watching TV with the action of drinking alcohol. What I would do was that I would have a soft drink with me on the sofa that I could just sip on and have while I was watching TV. And then when I wanted alcohol, I would have to do the full thing of getting up, going to the fridge, opening the fridge, taking a drink, putting it back, going back on the sofa. Now, at the beginning, I was getting up very often to get my drink, and I would still drink a lot. But it wasn't necessarily about moderating or seeing results immediately. It was more a long-term thing and slowly trying to undo the habit of having my alcohol in front of TV. My last tip is to track your drinks. As you probably know, you can measure the amount of alcohol in your drink by converting it into alcohol units. I think that pretty much every country has their own alcohol unit scale. At least I know that the one in the US is different from the UK, which is different from Ireland, which is different from France. But the end result is always the same, being able to know exactly how much alcohol you consumed. For instance, in the UK, I know that in one standard volume of gin, which is 25 milliliter, there is one unit of alcohol. When in whiskey, for the same volume, 
there is 1.2 units. Being able to track your drinks will be extremely useful in your recovery journey. It's data on your situation. And I love data. I love figures. I love Excel tables and charts. And I love being able to speak numbers. Tracking your drinks means that you will be able to see on a day-to-day basis how much you drink. And it will also give you a way to compare different types of drink, whether it's spirits, wine, beer. You will have an objective number that you can rely on. And the more data you have, the more you will be able to see patterns. For instance, do you drink more on the weekends? Do you drink more on Monday after the first day back at the office? Do you drink more when you are alone or with others? An easy way to track your drinks is to use a kitchen scale and just measure how much liquid you put in your glass. Then take note as you go and store this information in your phone or your laptop. I promise you will be grateful to have this in the future. To recap, my tips to drink less easily are number one, delay your start time by doing fun activities or chores. Number two, have a meal before you start drinking alcohol. Number three, have a big glass of water before you drink alcohol. Number four, keep your drink in the fridge and get a soft drink to sip on while on the sofa. Number five, collect data by tracking the number of alcohol units that you drink. As I quickly said earlier, Some of these tips were even more powerful when combined with the Sinclair method, which is exactly what I teach inside of my program, the Sip Smart Academy. If you are interested in this program, you can sign up for the waitlist to be the first one to know when doors open. The link is in the show notes. I hope you found these tips helpful. DM me on Instagram and let me know if you implement some of them and how it goes. I would love to hear your story. I also created a form so that you can ask your question if you want me to answer them in the podcast. It is fully anonymous and the link is in the show notes. Thank you for listening. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to learn more about my story and the science behind moderate drinking, download your free handbook in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, leave me a rating or a review. It helps us reach even more listeners and transform lives. I'll see you next time on the Sleep Revolution podcast.